this is a solution of copper and nickel. And we're going to try to get the nickel and the copper out of the solution and separate them. I am 303. Thanks for watching. Warning. Acids are dangerous and their fumes can be harmful. Protect yourself. Right at the beginning, we're going to add about 10 grams of zinc pieces. And then I'm going to speed up the video. Right away, you can see there's a very good reaction as the zinc is instantly being dissolved. A few months ago, before I started making videos, I made this solution of copper and nickel in acetic acid. Yes, I dissolved them in vinegar. And now we're going to add a larger piece of zinc that weighs 10 grams by itself. If you watched my brass, copper, zinc, and acid series, then you may remember I made a reactivity series list of 12 metals from the least to the most. You'll see copper comes in at number 4, then nickel at 7, zinc at 8, and then aluminum at 10. That's the basis for using zinc to try to displace these two higher metals. When I made this originally, the copper came from copper wires and the nickel was from a one ounce ingot from a reputable company. Here you can see the zinc is doing what it's supposed to do. It's starting to displace the copper first. So I know that when I started, I had one troy ounce or 31.1 grams each of copper and nickel. And when I originally made these solutions, they were separate. I originally used them to do some electroplating. It's recommended that if you're going to try to copper plate steel, that you first plate it with nickel before you apply the copper because the copper doesn't stick very well to steel on its own. In fact, it kind of does what it's doing right here and balls up and doesn't stick to the cathode. So at this time, all of the smaller pieces of zinc have completely dissolved as far as I can tell. And the big piece I pushed up against the side of the beaker so you could see it on the camera. Now, this is interesting because there's all these little balls of copper. The solution has turned a light green, so it looks like nickel acetate. And the big piece of zinc is very black. Looking back at this now, I wish at this point I would have taken all of that precipitated copper out. It may have made things easier later on. Nickel and copper do not dissolve well in acetic acid on their own. For the copper, I added hydrogen peroxide to get it to dissolve. And for the nickel, I used electrochemistry to make the nickel acetate. So we wanted to see what was going on with the big piece of zinc. The black coating could be the nickel starting to plate out onto the zinc. So I thought if we tested it with fire, we could accomplish a couple of things. We could expose some fresh zinc that will help continue the displacement reaction. And we can see if that's really nickel or if it's something else. Zinc has a melting point of 787.2 degrees Fahrenheit or 419.5 degrees Celsius. Nickel, on the other hand, is much higher at 2,651 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,455 degrees Celsius. At this point, the zinc should be melted. And it does look like this is nickel because it's not melting at all. Oh, the shell broke. There's the zinc. So in all these pieces, it looks like there is zinc on the inside and it looks like they're coated with the hard shell of black nickel. This piece looks like the biggest and it looks like there's the most zinc exposed on this one. The others have a lot of nickel on the outside. So we'll take this one over and drop it into the solution. I guess we'll have to take the other ones over there too. Hey, come back here. Mm. 
Now that we have them all back into the beaker, I turn the heat back on and we got a pretty good reaction going of the zinc dissolving. Here's the little pieces that I didn't add, so I'll go ahead and put those in there now. If you're wondering why I combined together the nickel acetate and the copper acetate solutions in the first place, I wanted to see what they would do if they were combined with electroplating. And basically what I found out was that the copper would plate out first and then in the middle you would get a plating of copper and nickel but it wouldn't be together as an alloy it would be copper and nickel just plating out at the same time and then when the copper was really depleted then the nickel would start plating out by itself now the solution is getting pretty clear and there's a lot of what looks like precipitated out copper and nickel so now we'll transfer this over into a smaller beaker and you can see when I'm pouring it out it appears to have a very dark color and there's the leftover zinc that did not get dissolved yet. So we're going to put it back on the super scientific hot plate over high heat and see if maybe boiling it for a little while will help some of that settle out. Here's a view from the side, and you can see what looks like an immense amount of precipitant floating around. I imagine that this is all spongy and light, and when it settles to the bottom, it will become more compact. Believe it or not, all of that, when it was dried out, turned into this. And there's some pure zinc there, there's some zinc with some nickel plating, and there's some zinc with a lot of nickel plating. I kind of repeated the same process that I showed before, I just didn't film it this time. We have a fairly clean solution of what looks like zinc acetate, and there's all the leftover sediment that was in the bottom. And then to this sediment, we we're going to add all the precipitated metal that we collected, we're going to add this zinc that's got the nickel coating on it and then we're going to save these for later and we will add some muriatic or hydrochloric acid the idea here is that the hydrochloric acid will dissolve the zinc and the nickel but it should leave behind some really clean copper we have a really good reaction going here as the zinc is getting violently dissolved. And here you can see the solution looks green, like nickel chloride. And you can see that the copper is remaining undissolved. The little volcanoes are probably pieces of nickel that are mixed in, causing these little what look like eruptions. Right in the middle of this nice green solution, is what looks like pure copper. So we will drain off the nickel chloride solution and wash the copper. First we'll add a little bit of the hydrochloric acid 
to see if we can remove any remaining undissolved zinc or nickel. After that, we washed it several times in distilled water, and here it is with the nickel chloride. And to the nickel chloride, we're going to add some little pieces of zinc to try to see if we can start displacing the nickel now. Here's what the copper looks like when it finishes drying out. So after I added these pieces of zinc, I noticed that there was still copper in the solution because the zinc was displacing more copper. No copper should have dissolved in the hydrochloric acid, but perhaps some of the copper was oxidized at some point that it allowed it to become dissolved. I didn't film it, but I removed all the precipitant that looked like copper. It really reminds me of what happened with my electroplating experiments that led to this project with the nickel and the copper plating out together. Here you can see that the zinc is displacing what looks like pure nickel. And I was able to decant off the liquid and get some out at this point. So I have to admit it was a little bit frustrating with the yield that I was getting and I think it was because the nickel was getting redissolved into the solution. So I decided I would take this piece of aluminum here and see if I couldn't precipitate out the rest of the nickel. I didn't want to use any more zinc because I've had a hard time recovering the zinc metal once I turn it into zinc chloride. I thought that the zinc would have displaced all of the nickel by this point, but apparently not. I thought that this big piece of aluminum would have enough mass to displace any of the nickel that was remaining in the solution. Here you can see that the piece of aluminum appears to be nickel plated and the solution looks dark. So I believe a good amount of nickel precipitated from the solution, but I'm going to continue this a little bit longer. If you're thinking that aluminum foil or powdered aluminum might have been faster, well, you're right. But this piece of aluminum was from a can melt that I did, and I don't really have any use for it at the moment. Aluminum foil has many uses, and if I had some powdered aluminum, I would probably be making a thermite video. Here's what the piece of aluminum looks like now, and all of the nickel plating has busted off while the aluminum continues corroding in the acid bath. Here's the rest of the aluminum getting dissolved into the solution and hopefully precipitating out some more nickel. Here is the precipitant that I gathered from this last run. Fun fact, of these four metals, only one's magnetic and it's nickel. Here's a Canadian dime from 1968. Canadian nickels, dimes, and quarters were made out of nearly pure nickel until 2000. Here's all the metal that we collected in the video. This first sample is the last that we collected that should be pretty pure nickel after all the copper was gone. See how it follows the magnet around? This next sample is what precipitated out after the original copper was removed. And although you can see it looks like copper, you can also tell there's some nickel in it because some of it is following the magnet around. And then this is the first of the copper that we pulled off and you can see nothing is following the magnet. Special thanks to my supporters for making this video possible. If you like my work, consider becoming a Patreon member today. Thank you very much. The end.